Hello, Computer Club. Welcome to the week three video lesson. Uh, this lesson, we are going to be talking primarily about the structure of code within Java and how to go about naming things and just understanding how this stuff works together with Minecraft. So this is going to be a lot to take in and it's not going to be very cool just yet. Uh, I wanted to get to adding items as quickly as possible, but we've got to uh, jump into some of the deep end a little bit first. So let's talk about what's actually on the screen now that we have all of this stuff at least working to the point where we can r launch Minecraft. On the left here we have the package explorer and the package explorer is all the files that it takes to compile your mod. Now it doesn't necessarily mean all the files that make up your mod, um, it means all the files that go into making it. So there are Minecraft files in here, there's all sorts of other stuff in here that won't actually go with your mod when we're all said and done, but they're here because they're part of the process of building things. The two most common areas we're going to mess with are the source main resource folder here and the source main Java here. Now these two things are known as packages. They have this little yellow crosshair symbol in the folder here. Um, and these two packages are where we're going to drop most of the things and where we're going to be putting our code and all that fun stuff. And if you click the little triangles next to them, they'll expand out. And this is uh, what the actual package is here. So this is like a folder of packages. This is the actual one. And then in this one right now, the only file you should have is something called mcmod.info. Now these things are directly related to one another and we're just gonna talk through them here. So go ahead and expand the example mod package and you should see another file called example mod.java. This is where the actual Java code is. And if you expand that, you'll actually then start seeing what's inside there. It'll say a class, some variables, and a function. Don't worry if you don't know what any of that means. We're gonna talk through it here as we go. But let's actually talk about what happens when you double click on these files. If you double click on example mod.java, it's gonna open up some code over here. Code that we don't know what it means yet, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. And if you double click on mcmod.info, it'll open up a, a text file here with some basic information as well. And at the heart of it, at the very basic level, the quickest thing we can modify is actually this mcmod.info file. This .info file is primarily used to provide information to Forge so that people know what mods they're loading and not loading. So the first thing we're going to have you do is simply let's rename your mod. And you can name it whatever you want, uh, but you're going to notice I skipped line 3 here, which is the mod ID. We're going to come back to that. So we're just going to call this Justin's sample mod and same with description we're going to change something here we're just going to make it a really cool modification to minecraft that makes it way better yep and then we've got a version thing here i'm just going to call this version 1.0 i'm going to leave the mc version alone that's the minecraft version i believe that has to correspond to what version i'll load it into um, I believe it'll fill it in with whatever version you're compiling against. Um, and then we've got the author list. I'm going to put my username in there. And uh, then we got some credits. You know, Justin Gehring. Sounds good. Okay, so we've made those changes. Um, and you'll notice there's a little star up here. The star indicates that you have not saved your work. Um, if you see that, it has not been saved. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And uh, now, at this point, we, can, we should test. We can and should test. Now, here's one of the most important things you can learn about coding um, is you need to run your code as often as possible. Uh, don't go modifying 100 lines of code without testing a few of them. You want to test right away. So we're just going to go ahead, and since we have basically gone through and made all the changes that I can think to make right now to this file, we should be able to run this, launch into Minecraft, and see what happens. Now, uh, again, compiling takes a little while. That's perfectly all right. So just bear with it. And I'm trying a new way of recording this video, so we'll see if this works better than our previous ones, hopefully less stuttery. And you can kind of watch in the background what's going on as the game loads up. Yeah. 
And there we go. Loading stuff here. And I'm betting the game's going to start right about now. There we go. So if I click on mods, to see what mods are installed, you'll notice it's no longer called example mod. It's now called Justin's sample mod 1.0 and zero child mods. And if I click on it, mod ID, example mod, mod state available. We didn't change that, but it's got our name, version, credits, authors. There's a URL field that apparently didn't get set. Oh, I left that blank. Uh, no child mods for this mod, and then a way cool modification to Minecraft that makes it way better. Hmm. Seems like it worked and did exactly what we would expect. And Minecraft didn't crash, so that's a good sign. So you just made your first mod modification, <laughs> but that's still pretty boring. Um, and what we're about to do doesn't get that much more interesting. So one of the things that matters a ton is the name of your mod. And it matters because if another mod has the exact same name, it's not going to operate properly. And that's controlled with the mod ID here. So what we're going to do here is simply try to rename our mod. And with programming, sometimes guessing and checking works. So we're just going to call it Justin's mod here. And maybe you want to try your name or something like that. In the long run, you'd want it to be more unique than even that. But... Uh, it's a good thing. And again, you'll notice I forgot to save. So I'm going to hit save again. And then I'm going to come here and debug client. And again, I'm going to have to wait for it to compile. It's slow. And then I'm going to have to wait for Minecraft to load. It's somewhat slow. And the question is, what do you think will happen? Do you have a guess? Did it simply change the name of our mod? Or is there going to be a bigger problem here? And that is kind of the question at the moment. So let's keep seeing what's going on here. And you can kind of watch the text down below. Learning to read that text is kind of a fun game. So for example, sound engine started, it loaded the sound, 16 stuff, whatever, Fajmo loader successful, loaded four mods, resource, stuff there sound system shutting down it looks like it's kind of doing the same thing over and over again it still says four mods loaded and four mods active okay so that's fine but wait a second here didn't we just rename this example mod version no mod information found hmm ask your mod author to provide a mod mc info file strange why would that have happened well the truth is, Forge doesn't really care about this mcmod.info file at all, other than that it uses it as a reference, and it knows how to reference it based on this mod ID, but we don't have a mod called this anymore. Um, and that's where this gets a little bit weird. So you'll notice here this says com.example.examplemod. Well, let's click here into example mod and see what we see. So in here, there is a string called mod ID, and that's called example mod. There's also this example mod up here, and I don't see it anywhere else necessarily other than these capital letters here, but uh, those look different. Those aren't lowercase like it was in our MC info right here before we changed it. So let's just change the ones that look the same and see what happens. Is that all it would take to rename it, do you think? So I've done that, and I saved it. Okay, I got rid of that. And now we've got a problem. Right here, there's a little marker here. And whenever you see this little red X, it means that the computer is not happy with something. And if you mouse over, it says the declared package com.example.justinsmod does not match the expected package of com.example.examplemod. Now, why would they not match? Well, the truth is, there's also this parent package right here. And if you right-click on this one, you can go to Properties, and you'll see that there's this structure going on here with the resources. It still says example mod there. It still says all of this stuff. So what... What are we to do about this? What can we do about this? Um, and so we could try to figure out what 
is available to us in terms of options here. So let's just poke around. So the first thing I'd want to look for is a rename. And do you see a rename anywhere in this list? I do not. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe let's just see what happens if we try to compile it anyway. Huh. Errors exist. Nope. Guess we can't do that either. Huh. Well, what if we go up to the top here and try double clicking it? Nope. It just opens it. Can we single click on the name here and change it? Nope. Hmm. Well, if it wasn't for the training that I'm giving you, we would now be stumped. Anytime you're renaming a large number of things, it's considered a term known as refactoring. And refactoring is something that you generally want to avoid because it can cause all sorts of weird things to happen. But when we're just starting out like it, this, it can be kind of useful if you're working from templates and all you want to do is rename them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to refactor this right here. And so what, if you right click here, there's an option to refactor. And lo and behold, here is our missing rename function that we were just looking for. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename it and we're going to get a little bit uh, more creative. And I want to talk about w how this naming is working. Java actually does things the opposite of a web address. And oftentimes doing this based on a web address is a good idea. So you'll notice the com is first. Com meaning in this case actually probably more like common. But um, you want to put like the the... Generally, you want to put your brand and then the name of the package. So it'll be com dot. In my case, I go by JR Corpse most of the time, and then in this case, this is going to be Justin's mod. So the before it was com dot example dot example mod. Yours should be something like com dot, and then whatever you know identifier you like to use for yourself, and then a name for your mod. The next time you make another mod, you'll leave the first two things exactly like they are. And you'll change the third to be, you know, Justin's second mod or something like that. And that way, everything you do is grouped by these, but everything after that will be unique. So again, I'm going to call this Justin's mod because that's what I started renaming it to. And then there's some options here. Update references, rename sub packages. We don't have any sub packages, so we don't really need to worry about it. Update textual occurrences and comments and strings. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, comments and strings are areas where the term Justin's mod might have shown up otherwise. Um, we're not going to do that, but if we had, it might have modified our MC info file to match. It's kind of like doing a string replace. Update fully qualified names in non-Java text files. Who? That sounds like another loaded sentence. And again, this is even more complicated. It basically goes looking for it in other files that aren't part of this right here. We're not going to do that either, but just for the sake of it, we're going to do a preview. And so there we go. It just says rename package blah to blah. Let's just see what happens. Say OK. And sure enough, it changed this, but it didn't just change this. It also changed this. Did you catch that? It changed this from example to JR Corpse. It took care of all the refactoring because the name of this package has to match the package line at the top of your Java file. If these two things don't match, it's going to err. Well, it looks like all of our other errors have gone away, so let's go ahead and run the client again. And let's see what happens. And fingers crossed, the game did not crash right away, so that's a good sign. It's still loading. Always have to wait for the loading. And here we are. Four mods loaded, four mods active. That's good. That means it loaded my mod. 
and then click on mods. Hey, my MC info file is back, but now it says mod ID is Justin's mod instead of example mod. So we changed that one thing, and I know you're probably thinking, oh, that's not that big of a deal. It really, really is. I hate to break it to you. Getting that one little name right and changing that one little thing is huge because all of you, if you don't change that right now, when we get to the step where you're sharing your mod with your friend, all of your mods would conflict with one another and would all break. Now, we're going to do one last rename here because it's also somewhat tricky. I don't like the term example mod here. I don't think it should stay that. And we can do the same thing here. And you'll notice the same term is here, example mod, example mod, example mod. Now, Java has some very strict rules regarding capital letters on things in terms of how things should be labeled. You'll notice in our package, everything was lowercase. And in our package here, everything was lowercase. And that was intentional. Um, however, you'll notice this is capitalized and that the second letter here is capitalized for some reason. And you'll notice that this B on blocks is capitalized. Whenever you see a letter that's capital or a word that starts with a capital letter, it's generally indicating that you are dealing with an object or as we like to call it, a class. Um, and so you'll see that here. And here you'll see the declaration, and we'll talk more about that when we actually make a declaration here. But you'll see a declaration here that says class right here. So this right here, this first letter should be capitalized. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to rename this to Justin's Mod. And same thing here, I'm going to rename this to Justin's Mod as well, just because they should match. Now, this line here is, uh, oh, and there's a third one. I missed that one. Sorry. Justin's mod dot version. Okay. Now, uh, this line here is uh, specific to Minecraft modding. Um, it's kind of some more identification information for Forge. It's basically saying what the mod ID is, and it'll pull in the variable here and what the version of it is. That's how it got the version before and how it got our official you know, MC info mod ID. Um, and then this line here is the declaration. But you'll notice that Java is still complaining here about this one line again. The public type Justin's mod must be defined in its own file. And the reason it's saying this, and this is true all the time in Java, anytime you declare a class, and you put it inside a file, you basically want one class per file. This is gonna matter later on, it doesn't matter right now. There's an exception to this rule, we're not gonna talk about that either, but one class per file, and just like our package had to match right here, our file name needs to match, and even though this is a class, this here, even though it's .java, needs to match as well. Now, we could have cheated, and done exactly what we did before and just gone to refactor and renamed. Um, but you'll also notice that uh, there should actually be a rename function in here. I'm not seeing it. So we'll just use the refactor here again, Justin's mod, and say OK. And sure enough, there we go. It caught all the changes that needed to be made, and we are good to go. Now, Let's talk about the remainder of this file real quick, just so you guys know what we're dealing with here. Um, so these classes are objects, meaning they are things with properties. Now I've given an object lesson before. If you were here last year, we talked about objects quite a bit. Um, Java is also an object-oriented programming, and we're going to get deep, deep, deep into that. What you need to know now, though, is that this class right here is our code for our module. Pretty much everything we write is going to end up in here. There are three built-in functions in uh, Forge that you can make use of. Um, and let me just see if I can pull them up real quick. Um, the first one that you should be aware of is init. Init stands for initialization. That's uh, basically when the forge module loader finally initializes that fires there's actually two other ones that are very similar um, and I'm just gonna copy this one because it's gonna be easier the first one 
is pre-init, and you can probably guess when that runs. It runs before everything else, and then the other one is post-init. And you can probably guess when that one runs. It's after everything else. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the code in here so you can see this. Justin's mod actually does something. Okay. And I, you'll notice, again, I've got a red X. Now, debugging is a big key to being successful as a programmer. I said that in the last video. I'm going to say it again. Debugging matters. There's no point in hitting this button up here if you've got a red X somewhere in your code. And Eclipse and Java will do a ton to help you figure out what you did wrong. So let's figure out what's going on. If we put our mouse over here, syntax error, insert parenthesis to complete expression. That would probably mean I'm missing a parenthesis. And generally it comes at the end of the red underlined squiggles is where the problem is going to be. It's either at the beginning or at the end of the red squiggle. And so I'm going to put a parenthesis right there and sure enough, everything went away. So let's go ahead and run this. And what you need to know, system.out.println, um, you don't need to memorize this. Don't worry about it. We're not trying to get you to learn every line of code or what public void pre-init means today. We simply want to get the mod doing something other than just changing its name. So what this should do is as soon as our mod is loaded, it's going to send text to uh, the command line window or the box window that Minecraft outputs all its text to. In our case, that's the console down here. And so when we run our mod, we should actually see something down here once it loads. Now, it's complaining because I forgot to save again. So I'm going to say OK. It'll save it for me. And here we go. Let's watch that window and see what we can find. Unable to instantiate org.fuse. Eh, not a big deal. Setting player. That's fine. It launched the game. It's loading up the modules, blah, 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 blah. Starting version check. Yep, up to date. Great. Binding, loading, loading some textures. Successfully loaded four mods. Now, wait a second here. Did you catch what just happened? We skipped right past something. Right? Oh, we'll let it finish. That way we stop getting all these crazy messages. So our game's still running in the background, but if we scroll up a little bit, there's a line here. And what's weird about this, though, is this was our pre-init function. Justin's mod actually does something. And there is something here where it shows the dirt block tile dot dirt and dirt block tile dot dirt. So those are the other two. So all three ran. They didn't necessarily run in the order we thought they would, which we might have to look into at some point. But it did actually put something out to our screen here. This came from the game and let us know, let us knew, let us know, it told us that our mod did in fact run and it executed our line of code. If you've got this line, you've completed lesson three, great job. That generally means in computer club that you can go back to playing video games if it's week three. If it's not and you're doing this after the fact, that's great. If you have questions during the week three lesson, please, 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 please let me know uh, so I can get a 3A video done for those questions and answers you may have. Um, wow, I got music to close out my session here. And uh, yeah, so with that, thank you. And hopefully next week we'll actually be making a legitimate mod that you'll be able to see in game so maybe a new item or something like that see you next time